Okay, well, uh, welcome to episode 20. Welcome to episode 20 of the uh, Yamaha Virago Cafe Racer Project. My name is Scott McCutcheon of Sovereign Studios, and uh, thanks for tuning in. So today, uh, we're going to be looking at the tank. Uh, in the last episode, we did some cable fixes that required me to weld this tab on here. You know, and then in previous videos, we had made some cuts into the tank there. And just, you know, overall, uh, I wanted to get the tank repainted and everything like that. But, um, you know, I was pretty much waiting for this to do, uh, or for this to happen before I really dug too deep. So one of the things that I noticed about this tank, obviously this is the original tank for the Virago. It's still in good shape. The problem with it, really, is that there's a bunch of rust inside. It's hard to see exactly, but it's not exactly the cleanest thing in, in there. Uh, you know, it's probably not going to be able to, to get a good look at it on this video, but, you know, the chances are, yeah, you can see all that nastiness down there, sort of, um, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's pretty gross in there, but it's the, uh, original tank, so it's expected to have a little bit of nastiness. So what I did is I went and picked up all this stuff. These three items right here are the, uh... Our product from KBS uh, it's the same people that I went and you know used the uh, paint back in like episode 2 we use that paint to do uh, uh, you know to paint the bike black but the same company also makes this product here and essentially what this is is a tank sealer kit you know we'll uh, take a look at the directions here and figure out exactly how this works but essentially essentially what this is is you clean it up right and uh you let it soak and do its thing uh in order to clean the tank real well then you prime it uh with whatever this is and then you finally seal it with this uh high quality urethane type sealer at least i think it's urethane um what did it say here yeah moisture cured urethane it's a pretty good deal in terms of getting the inside of the tank clean. We don't want to put the tank on, pour fuel into it, and then have the fuel be contaminated as soon as it hits the tank. That'd be no good. You know, so basically we're replacing all of the fuel lines, we're replacing the filter, we're replacing the carburetor, and everything's gonna be real clean, but if we don't have a clean tank, then it's not gonna be any good at all. We're gonna use this product here to go ahead and, and take care of that. I think it was like uh, 50 bucks, 45 bucks on Amazon or something like that to get these three bottles here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the directions that came with it and uh, then I'll get back to you with exactly how this process is gonna work. Okay, so after reading the directions, uh, and you may be able to pause the video or something and read them here for yourself, but after reading the directions, this is gonna take a long time, probably about a week actually. Uh, to actually do this whole process simply because it's going to have to cure and soak and do that sort of stuff so first step is really just cleaning the tank so to get everything prepped and ready this is the bottle we're looking for um, and the tank uh, so really the first things first is we need to seal any of the holes uh, that are here and specifically this tank has three holes obviously one for the uh, gas cap and then two holes at the bottom for the um, these things uh, that I'm drawing a blank on their name right now. I got some duct tape here that we're just going to slap on in place of these holes. Stick that in there and make sure it hears real well. You don't want it leaking. And of course you want to leave a little uh, cues there so it's easy to pull that tape off when we need to. Okay, so the, the directions recommend that you take a one-to-one -one dilution ratio of this KBS clean with hot water. So I've got this bottle filled with hot water right here, the KBS clean here, and then they also recommend that you have some type of agitator. Uh, in this case I'm just going to use these rusty old bolts to help agitate and you're just going to drop them into the tank. Here's our KBS cleaner that we'll pour in there. I figure I'll use about half the bottle for the, to start with, and the other half with this hot water. Shake it up real good, make sure it's not leaking on that duct tape there. 
I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on. Grab a little uh, bit of cellophane here. Uh, you know, your standard cooking cellophane. So we'll uh, basically just put right there. We'll go ahead and reinstall the cap, but the trick is that we don't want to damage the cap uh, in any way. So we're going to use this cellophane to kind of separate the cap itself from the tank. We'll pretty much just cram right here. Right? And so now with the fluid in place, Gonna make sure that it coats the whole inside of the tank real well. All right, give it a bunch of good shakes. Make sure that it's uh, good and clean. And then you're gonna want to leave it sitting uh, for probably a good day, about 24 hours, according to the instructions. So you know that KBS tank. Heavy gum varnish require extended soaking times up to 24 hours. So we're gonna to want to leave it soaked in there for a little while. I'll probably give it, yeah, maybe maybe the day. I'll come back tomorrow and let it do its thing. I think I am gonna fill it up with the rest of the bottle so that I'm not uh, wasting any more time than I need to. Makes a pretty good like froth with that agitator in there. Um, so let's go ahead and fill it up the rest of the way. After which, uh, we'll add a little bit more, we'll replace this thing. One last thing that I figure I should mention uh, before we call it a day and let it soak. Every so often, we're going to want to come, you know, like right now, obviously it's soaking into the base of the tank, but every so often we're going to want to come and, you know, uh, move the tank around. You know, maybe like let it sit like that for a couple hours, flip it over, let it sit the other way for a couple hours. You know, the idea being that it gets time to soak and permeate all sections of the tank. So every few hours, I'm gonna come out here and just rotate it and let it sit and soak into the insides of the tank walls. And that should get it real nice and clean on the inside so that we can prepare it for the primer, which we're basically gonna do the same thing with. And then the tank sealer itself, again, same thing. So, uh, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, well welcome back. Uh, it's been about 24 hours since we've had the uh, cleaning solution soaking in the tank. So we're gonna go and drain it and then thoroughly clean it. We're gonna rinse it out with water, you know, I'll stick it in the tub or something like that and make sure it gets real nice and soaked. Uh, and then we're gonna let it sit and dry uh, for probably another day or so to make sure that it's completely 100% dry. Uh, before we start the next uh, step of the process. So let's do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, drained the tank of all the cleaning solvent, uh, gave it a good thorough rinse uh, with the hose and uh, made sure it was all clean. Um, make sure you pull the agitator screws out or if you used keys or whatever chains, you know, you put in there, uh, make sure all that stuff gets out uh, and that it's empty. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that it's completely 100% bone dry. You cannot have any moisture in it whatsoever um, before you start the next step. So either leave it alone for a couple days uh, and just let it dry naturally, or maybe stick a hair dryer in it, or if you have a heat gun or something like that, uh, maybe pipe that in there for a little bit uh, to make sure that it heats up what's in there and evaporates it uh, to make sure that it's bone dry. Because uh, the next step we're gonna do is uh, this stuff, this uh, KBS Rust Blast, and this is basically uh, like a acid metal etch uh, that you'll pour in here into your tank and um, it'll eat away that rust on the inside of it. Uh, but you can't have any moisture in it when you do that, so make sure it's bone dry. So we'll go ahead and get it dry uh, and we'll pick this up once that's done. All right. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start step two of the uh, 
tank sealer here. We've uh, let this sit here and dry for a couple days uh, to make sure all the moisture was out of it now that we've cleaned it up. Um, now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, rust blast portion of it. And um, what this is, is uh, it's basically just a uh, metal etch that we're going to dump in the tank. We're going to dump all of it. We're not going to dilute it. Um, we'll dump every, every last bit of this thing into the tank. We do not add water, so we're going to do step two. And then basically what we're going to do, we're going to dump all that stuff in there and we're going to roll the tank, you know, just coat the whole inside of it. Uh, repeat the rolling, flip the tank every five minutes or so for about an hour. And what this is, is a, you know, again, as it says here, it's an acid metal etch that will neutralize the existing rust and also create an anchor pattern ideal for the sealer adhesion. What this will do is basically etch the inside of the tank so that when we put this stuff in here, it's got a good surface to seal against. So it does note that, uh, you know, the tank needs to be fully dry before we do it. And then, uh, you know, make sure that you don't just let it sit there and dry on that surface as it says here to make sure that you don't get this build up so we don't let it dry we'll just keep it flipping over you know to make sure that it coats the inside of the tank and gets a good etch once you're thoroughly once you know we feel that it's in good shape what we're going to do is just uh, drain and capture the rust blast into a bucket uh, which we've got down there we'll drain this uh, rust blast in there catch it and make sure that you know we've gotten a fair amount of the rust out of the tank. If not, we'll put it in, we'll put it back into the tank, and just repeat that process as needed. This piece right here in bold is worth noting. Note that it's not necessary to remove every last bit of rust before sealing, uh, mostly because this stuff is gonna coat over it anyway. So really we just need to get uh, a pretty good etch and get all the big rust spots out of it, you know, and that's what this is basically good for. So once we've gotten it good and cleaned up, uh, really the idea is that we'll just rinse it out, let it dry, and then come back for step three. Okay, we'll uh, put the uh, cap back on, sealed up the, the holes down at the bottom of the tank that are used for these these things here, and I guess we'll just go ahead and dump this in. And there's a fair amount of fluid in there, you know, so it'll make for a pretty good deal. And then pretty much, you know, we're just gonna leave it sitting. And then every few minutes we'll come and turn it at a, into a different angle so that the fluid is sitting differently. Uh, and etching into all sides of the inside of the tank. We pretty much know that we're really gonna want the, uh, the bottoms of the tank done real well. Because I, I feel like the bottom of the tank... At least from what I could see peering inside the hole, the bottom of the tank is the most rusted spot, you know, where some fluid had obviously been sitting. Either way, uh, that should be good. So we'll uh, come back for this part shortly. Okay, so we've been rolling the tank with that acid etch inside for a couple hours now. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and drain it and see what kind of progress it's made. So we'll drain it into this bucket here, and hopefully that will give us a good idea of how we're working. Based on what the direction said, I don't think we want to leave it um, overnight. I don't think we want to leave this fluid in the tank overnight. And I'm basing that based off of, you know, these directions here. They say that as this metal etches into it, into the tank, that um, you know it leaves this zinc phosphate like film all over the inside of the tank and if too much of that builds up on the inside of the tank it apparently becomes difficult to adhere uh, the seal to it according to the direction so we want to try to avoid that oh, and you can see it looks like it actually did a really great job all that stuff. This uh, acid again is pretty, I mean it's acid, so you don't want to get it on your hands. You don't want to get it on your hands, so make sure you're wearing uh, some gloves or something when you do this part. And I doubt you guys can see in there, but man, you, it did a real number on the inside of that tank. Really cleaned it up good. 
from what I can see. We may not even need to do that a second time. That stuff was strong. It really did the trick. Okay, well with, uh, with most of the acid out, that looks really good in there. Uh, but we need to get it dried. But first we're gonna wanna wash it out with water. So, you, you know, there's the acid. And we'll clean it up or get the hose through it, you know, so that it's, uh, it'll start being nice and fresh rather than covered in acid. And then uh, we'll get it dried uh, so that we can get ready for the sealant. All right, so I rinsed the tank out. Uh, got all this acid out of there. But after, after really looking inside the tank, it's gonna be difficult for me to show you uh, on the camera, but after looking inside the tank, I am extremely impressed with how this worked. Um, because I was kind of concerned that the inside of that tank was a little too rusty, you know? And uh, when I was looking in it, man, I, you know, I was like, there's a ton of rust in here. I might have to do this a few times or buy an extra bottle and all that. Instead, man, you know, a couple hours with that rust blast in here, and that thing is silver. It looks almost new. Like, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you know, so I was able to, to get a somewhat good look down in there, and it's gonna be impossible for you guys to really see. Um, but man, I don't know if you can see that in there. Uh, but man, it did a phenomenal job of getting the inside of that tank clean. I, uh, I'm unbelievably impressed. So, I'm gonna highly recommend this product. If you guys are watching this and need to do this sort of job for your tank, this thing is the way to go, it looks like. At the very least, that acid is insane. Uh, either way, it ate every last bit of that rust, but the, uh, uh, the directions here say that you shouldn't even worry if it doesn't, you know, so you could use this on an even worse tank It sounds like because really the sealer will cover uh, Everything that's not you know fully removed It says right there not necessary to remove every, every last bit of rust But man it sure as fuck did <laughs> it removed every last bit of rust in there is what it looks like It's it's insane either way enough about that. Uh I'm impressed. However, uh, we want to dry this up and we want to make sure it gets done well. So I think what we're going to do, stick a heat gun in it for a little while. Heat it up so much so that the, uh, the water that's left over there evaporates. We don't want it to puddle on this freshly etched metal. Um, so just leave it like that for a little while. That is a metal tank, so it's going to get pretty hot. So you might want to like, you know, not leave it on a giant piece of cardboard might be a good idea okay uh, either way let that hang out for I don't know 10 or 15 minutes or so make sure it uh, gets the tank up to a good temperature and uh, you know evaporates all the extra moisture in there um, once uh, once that's ready you know we'll be ready uh, we'll probably leave it overnight and then maybe tomorrow or the day after we'll come back and start step three, which is the actual uh, sealing of the inside of the tank using that KBS sealer. Okay, uh, well, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna get started on step three of the uh, tank sealing project. And that's where we get to use this uh, KBS tank sealer, you know, just to coat the inside of the tank with this polyurethane type sealant. And that should create a uh, pretty good surface for the fuel inside the tank, you know, so that it, everything remains uncontaminated. Uh, before we start step three, I wanted to make a quick note about the threads for the petcocks here. Uh, considering that these threads actually go up into the tank and these holes are uh, exposed on the inside, when we pour sealer in here, uh, you know, the possibility is high that these uh, threads become covered in this sealant. And once it hardens, will be really difficult to get it out of those threads. Um, so I'm going to jam a little bit of paper towel in there. Uh, the directions actually say you can use WD-40 around the holes to, um, you know, prevent adhesion of the sealant. But I'm not super comfortable with that. 
only because you know it's gonna be wet with WD-40 on the inside. So I don't really like that. So I think I'm just gonna jam it closed with these uh, uh, paper towels, which hopefully will be enough to keep the sealant out of the threads. And then once we have the paper towels jammed in there, go ahead and duct tape over it like we've been doing. So we know that uh, we're not gonna lose any sealant out of the bottom. Now with that in place, so at this point we're ready to uh, dump the sealer into the tank. And again, you know, uh, as per the last step, it, it's not entirely necessary to get every last piece of rust out of there because this sealer is gonna cover over it anyway. Uh, and now that we've etched it, it should have a good primed surface for that, uh, for adhering to the inside of the tank. They, uh, they recommend here that uh, you do this sealant process within 10 days of doing the etching. So if you did the etching and you waited for a while, you may need to do the etching again to make sure that you get a good surface to adhere to. They, uh, they want you to make a note that you're, you shouldn't whip or shake this can. Uh, as it can introduce air bubbles into the sealer, which can adversely affect the sealing process. And then basically all you do is you just pour this into the tank and then rotate the tank around for a while to make sure that all sides of the inside of the tank are evenly coated. You know, this could take 30 minutes, an hour, or something like that. As it says here, it's a single thin coat and you want to make sure that you just get all of it. If after about 30 minutes or an hour, you think you've got a good, uh, good coating on the inside, and you still have sealant, you can either drain it out or you can keep working the tank to a point where the sealant is spread more evenly. Uh, what you don't want is puddles. So you don't want puddles of this stuff hanging out in the tank when it hardens. So it's just gonna be a bad deal if, if that happens. If you see like foaming or bubbling while this is going on, then usually it's a sign of uh, your tank was still moist when you started this. You know, so gas is escaping as this is hardening. You don't want that either. You know, make sure that once this is through and starting to cure that you get anything out of the threads if there's anything like that. Make sure you didn't get any in your fuel lines. This stuff cannot be removed by any solvent. Once it hardens, it's hard. So good luck with that. Either way, uh, once it's all done, let it sit for about 96 hours. Uh, what is that? Five days? Four days? Something like that? So you'll want to let it just sit for about a week, really, to let it cure at maximum. Uh, don't put the tank in direct sunlight. Don't put it near heat while it's curing. Otherwise, pretty standard stuff, right? So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other ones, and we're just going to pour it in, get it rotating around the tank, and then uh, we'll seal it up, do some more rotations, and we'll keep that up for about 30 minutes to an hour. And hopefully that'll be it for sealing the tank. So... Two other tricks with this sealant stuff. Obviously, it's gonna be a little hard to get it around the neck and the, of the fuel inlet. So the kit actually provided you a little brush in case you need it. So we'll kind of use that when we get to the point. Let's uh, pour. That should be all of it, or as much as we're really gonna get anyway. So let's uh, seal this up and then we'll Slowly do the rotations, you know, just to make sure that it gets coated well. Okay, this is about 30 minutes of rotation, and you can see that it's uh, it's actually got a really nice coating in there, despite being still wet in a number of places. Um, I'm gonna try and get this brush using some of the excess that's in this can. I'm gonna try and see if I can't get the uh, the neck done a little bit better. Yeah, that's much better right around the neck. It's looking pretty good. But I think we're gonna wanna keep uh, keep rotating for a little while longer. I'm gonna keep doing this for a little while and uh, I'll be back shortly. So I guess now that we have a, uh, we know we have a good coating on the inside, I think we're okay to uh, uh, go ahead and pull off these this tape here and make sure that we get all of the uh, uh, sealant out of the threads before it dries. And again, you probably don't want to get the sealant all over your hands, nor do you want to leave it sitting on the tank, although they did say you could use it externally. Make sure all that stuff's nice and clean. Huh. Oh. Apparently I have some excess. Alright, so there was a little bit left over still uh, in there, which we can drain. Okay, so we actually did have a little bit of excess that drained out. Um, that I suppose we could always dump back in if we need to, but 
I don't think we do. I think we got a pretty good coat on the inside. But yeah, I think once you, uh, you make sure you're pretty much coated real well, uh, you can allow it to drain. Don't let it puddle anywhere in the tank. So we had a good 30, 45 minutes of this uh, sealer in the tank being rotated. And we got a, uh, we got a really good coat on the inside, I think. You know, as best as I can tell, that looks like it was really well done. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but I think it made good progress in there in terms of getting everything sealed up. I, uh, I went ahead and drained the excess. And as you can see, we really only ended up using about half the can in terms of coating the inside of that tank. The, the rest came out as excess. Unfortunately, once this is exposed to the uh, open air, the sealer pretty much is gonna harden. Don't really think we're able to reuse it at all. But this becomes the excess. I suppose we could always dump it back in there and try and get a thicker coat, but I really don't think that that is necessary. And the directions don't say to do two coats. They just say that it's supposed to be a thin, a single thin coat application. It really only needs one thin coat of this sealer and should be good. That's about it. So the final steps here is, uh, final steps here is pretty much that we are gonna end up just waiting uh, the next 96 hours for this thing to cure. I think I'm gonna end up cutting the video here though. Uh, I'm not gonna show you 96 hours of this thing drying. Now that it's all nice and coated, I think that's gonna be a really good uh, surface on the inside of the tank for, the, for having clean fuel. You know, over the next few days, we'll come back and take a look at this uh, probably in the, later, in the next episode in terms of how, uh, how it did, you know, once it's, or how it, how it finished curing. Okay, I think that was a pretty good deal. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, do that sort of thing, share it with your friends. Maybe check out my game, Ethereal Legends, on Steam. Um, and uh, let me know what you think about this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the work we got, we got done here in this episode, so uh, hopefully we're getting close to being able to finish up getting the fuel system together. And uh, man, I'm so ready to start this thing. You guys have no idea. <laughs> All right, uh, catch up with you on the next one. Thanks.